Great Waterton is a town on the east coast of the island. It was once abandoned for many years after the town's springs were drying up. But thanks to Thomas for rediscovering it, Great Waterton was restored and now fully operational. Good morning, Harvey. Oh, good morning, Thomas. What brings you here? Is there work that needs to be done? Yes, the buffers up the ravine need to be replaced. They've been there for a long time now. It's time that the old ones be taken down and new ones put up. I thought there was a bridge that used to cross it. What do you suppose ever happened to it? Uh, I have no idea. Well, well, bridges get old too. I suppose it fell down because of old rusty metal. I haven't thought about Rolling River Bridge in years. Rolling River Bridge used to be part of the branch line on Grey Waterton, but one day, while delivering lumber, Thomas had accidentally tried to cross it, not knowing it was unsafe, which caused it to fall into the ravine below. The Fat Controller had decided to install buffers rather than rebuild the bridge itself, but they were getting old and rusty and had to be replaced, and Harvey was just the engine to help out. Uh, well done. Now, uh, uh, it's time for a snooze. Huh? Do you two hear that? It's coming from across the ravine. But, but there are no other tracks that lead to the other side. Hello? Who's there? <coughs> and then, after it blew its whistle, I raced away. All the way back here to Knapford. I didn't know that there was a ghost at Great. Uh, what's the town called again? Don't be silly. There's no such thing as ghosts. Hey, but Thomas, there was chuffin' coming from the other side of the ravine, where Roland River Bridge used to be. What else could be making that noise? Well, uh, I'm not sure. But I'll find out myself tonight. Huh? I'm going back to Rolling River Bridge to inspect what it could be. No, Thomas! Don't do it! The ghost could appear and attack you! How can it? <laughs> There's no bridge to cross. Alrighty then, Ghost Engine. Let's see who or what you really are. Hello? Who's there? I'm not afraid. Who are you? Oh! Hello? Who's there? Oh, hello. Are you the one making that puffing sound and blowing your whistle? Well, I am the only engine over here, so I guess I am. <laughs> the name's Neil. Who are you? My name's Thomas. What are you doing over there? Well, I used to work on Sodor many years ago. Back then, the railway was known as the Sodor and Mainland Railway. But it was decided to make the railway larger and turn it into the North Western Railway. My old controller decided it would be easier to have me be scrapped instead of sending me to another railway. 
but some of the workmen were kind enough to let me hide on the other side of... Uh, what used to be Rolling River Bridge. I've been here ever since. But how is it you're still in steam? Well, some row enthusiasts found me and decided to have me restored to the best of their abilities. They come here once a week just to chat and sometimes drive me up and down the line. What's on the other side of the ravine? Oh, it's just an old goods yard used for storing coaches and trucks. There's also a small shed here where I was placed in. Bubbling boilers! What a story! Neil, do you want to work on the railway again? More than anything. Then I know just the place. Wait there. Hello down there! Rescue team here to help! Oh, why, thank you! Neil, this is Sir Robert Normby. He's the Earl of Sodor. He wants his own railway on his estate. And I could use some more help. Would you like to work on my estate railway? Oh yes sir, please sir. After Harold carried Neil across the ravine, Thomas buffered up to him and took him to the steamworks. Harvey, meet Neil. He used to work on Sodor many years ago. Oh, so you're the ghost engine, eh? Well, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Harvey. Sorry for giving you a bit of a fright. Come along, Neil. I'll take you to the estate railway. Thomas, is this the new engine? Yes, it is. Neil, meet Stephen and Glyn. You're going to be working with them. Nice to meet you. But I wouldn't exactly call myself a new engine, seeing that I've probably been here for years. <laughs> Duck's branch line gets very busy in the summer months. Extra visits want to take trips along the coast, and many which can put a strain on the engines. Phew! There were so many passengers at Aldborough, I had to get an extra coach! Not to mention the goods work has gone up now that the markets are in season. We had to take twice as many trucks as usual. Doesn't help the twins are working on the main line more. This line is too big for the two of us. Indeed it is. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. I can see you two are being overworked right now. So you'll be pleased to know another engine is coming to help with the goods work. Oh, thank you, sir. However, a few days later, when they saw who had come to help, Oliver wasn't pleased at all. Duck, what's this diesel doing here? The Fats Controller says I'm to shunt your trains and take the goods work. Well, good to see you, Norman. 
let's get to work then, shall we? Norman and Oliver said nothing as both rolled off to work. Mommy, what kind of an engine is that? It looks cool. That's a diesel. They are more common at the bigger stations. You don't see many around here. Norman never normally paid much attention to the passengers. As a goods engine, he had no reason to take any notice of them. But that child had piqued his interest. Oh, um, hello. He wasn't sure what he was meant to say to passengers. Um, good weather, isn't it? Got to dash. Um, good day. What a polite engine. We must tell our friends about him. And so they did. Before long, people were lining up by the side of the yard to watch Norman shunt. He felt very nervous, but proud of his new attention. It's unsafe. Oh, what's the harm? They only want to watch me shunt. An engine could get used to this. Hey, will you two stop singing? The fat controller will be here soon. Ah, Norman. I'm pleased with your work so far, but I hear the passengers have taken a special interest in you. We can't have them looming around the yards in case they try and get a closer look. Oh, right. Yes, sir. Which is why you shall be taking over Oliver's morning service. A diesel rail tour of sorts. Oh, thank you, sir. What is this world coming to? A diesel rail tour? You diesels are everywhere already. Why would anyone want to see a smelly thing like you? Smelly? Smelly? We diesels are just as good as you. Now, if you don't mind, I have to get a wash down for tomorrow. Must look my best for my passengers. Why are you looking at me like that? Have I got soap in my face? How dare you, Oliver! I know you had a checkered pass with diesels. I have as well. But that's no reason for rudeness. Norman has been perfectly civil. And the least you could do is let him pull a train. Oliver said nothing and went sulkily to sleep. Norman, however, couldn't sleep with the idea of taking passengers. It was getting to his radiator. What Norman had forgotten in all of his excitement, however, was that he had never pulled coaches before. He just presumed it would just be like trucks. Now, Norman, I shall be boarding your first train to see how you do. If this goes well, this may become a permanent part of the timetable until you go back to the main line. Oh, thank you, sir. Now everyone gets in quickly, please. All aboard the island's first diesel rail tour. Norman didn't hear them as he sped down the line. Norman was going so fast that the passengers couldn't enjoy the view. It was just a blur. Come on, come on, stop holding back! And then, it happened. With a loud bang, Norman came to a stop just beyond the platform. Sizzling spark plugs! What was that? Looks to me like all that bumping has burst the brake pipe. <laughs> Must be why you're being held back. <laughs> oh no! Oh no is right. We have had the bumpiest journey I've ever had. And now these coaches will need to go to the works. <sighs> oh dear, Norman. I thought I could trust the sensible engine like you. Mr. Oliver, don't be too mean, Jim. Remember how you felt after you fell down that turntable on your first day? Oh, I'm going to regret this. 
Well, sir, maybe I could show Norm how to handle coaches and he could try again. R really? Well, as somewhat of an expert myself, I could spare the time. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Oh, um, Mr. Oliver, is this such a good idea? Of course it is, Toad. Now, Norman, just buffer up to Toad slowly. Well, okay then. Just relax, Norman. You can do it. Just don't panic. Don't panic. PANIC! This will be a long day. After a rocky start, Norman started to learn quickly. He was buffering up slowly, running smoothly, and made extra sure not to bump Toad. You've got it, Mr. Norman. Oh, um, thank you, Toad. I just hope I can do this under pressure. Coaches are so different from trucks or brake vans. Well, I have faith in you. You've shown more care here than any other diesel I've known. Well, thank you. Let me go refill before I take the train. Morning, Norman. How's the training coming? Good, thanks. Oliver seems to have completely changed his tune, though. It's remarkable how he speaks so differently to me now. <laughs> you can thank Toad for that. If it was up to Oliver, he'd have left you to be sent off in disgrace. But why? I haven't done anything to him. Oh, don't take it personally. He was on the run from Diesel's for years when he left the mainland. It left quite the bad first impression. Not helped by how stubborn he can be. Oh my! I had no idea. Well then, I'll make sure his training isn't wasted on me. Sorry about that. J just getting used to this. The passengers were unsure about boarding, but with a little encouragement of half price tickets from the pack controller, they gladly got on board. Keeping Oliver's teachings and Duck's words in mind, Norman tried his best to be gentle with the train, despite his rough nature. Well done, Norman. That was much better than before. I see all of his training worked well. It seems you two really do make a good pair. Oh, thank you, sir. He did well. Indeed he did. In fact, I would like you to work here on the Little Western a little longer. Donald and Douglas are doing a fine job on the main line and would like to work there on a more permanent basis. Would you like to work here in their place? Norman was unsure. Moving from the diesel works would be a big change. But after a few seconds, he smiled. I would be delighted, sir. As would I. Then that's settled. Norman now resides at Arlsberg Sheds with Duck, Oliver and Toad. He has fit into the team well, not only with his rail tours, but even on normal goods work. On rare occasions, when Duck or Oliver are unwell, he has even pulled the daily passenger train. Everyone agrees that while he is very different, the Little Western would not be the same without him. It was a very rainy day on the island of Sodor. Bill and Ben, the tank engine twins, were making their way back to their shed after a hard day's work. Hurry up, Ben! I want to get back to my shed quickly! I am hurrying up! This rain is making the rail slippery! Wow! 
Well, at least the rain isn't causing too many problems for us. Thomas was making his way to Farquhar for the return journey back to Knapford. He was just approaching the station when... Oh, here comes Percy. Yes, he's coming in awfully fast. Oh! They're pushing me! They're pushing me! Oh, look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Oof. Oh my, what on earth happened? They crashed. Are you two all right? Oh, I think so. Uh-huh. Soon, Emily brought Rocky to help lift Thomas and Percy back to safety. Now then, Thomas and Percy, what happened? The troublesome trucks were pushing me. And my wheels slipped on the wet rails because of this rain! Oh, bother this rainy weather. It's been nothing but a problem for us, and now it's put two of my engines out of action. Now who can I get to run the branch line for the time being? Wait a minute. That gives me an idea. Emily, take Thomas and Percy to the steamworks, please. I'm off to make some arrangements. The next morning, the Fat Controller went to see Bill and Ben at the clay pits. He had some exciting news for them. With the heavy rain recently, work up here at the clay pit shall be halted until the weather has cleared up. I've arranged for Marion and Timothy to work elsewhere, and since Thomas and Percy are being repaired at the steamworks, I'd like you two to watch over Thomas's branch line for the time being. Oh, sir? Running a branch line? Yes. If all goes well, this could lead to new opportunities for you both to do more work outside the clay pits. So I want no trouble from either of you. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir! sir. <laughs> My very own branch line! You mean, our branch line? Well, it's still Thomas's branch line. You two are just helping to run it for a bit until he and Percy get back. Well, either way, we know all about running branch lines. Do you, though? Of course we do, Timothy. The clay pits are at the end of Edward's branch line. And we work at said clay pits. Which means we work on a branch line. So we know all about them. If you say so. Yeah, we do say so. We just did say so! <laughs> oh, hello Bill and Ben. Guess what, Edward? The fat controller has asked us to run Thomas's branch line while he and Percy are away. Really? Well, congratulations to you too. But this is a big responsibility. Running a branch line is very serious business. There are passengers that need to be brought to their destinations on time, and goods that need to be delivered safely. Not to mention it's a lot bigger than the clay pits. Oh, no need to force Edward. We can manage it. Yeah, it can't be that hard. Hmm, well... We shall see, then. Oh, morning, Bill. Ben, the Fat Controller told me you'd be here to help out. That's right. All your problems are gone now that we are here. The Fat Controller thinks very highly of us. That's why he put us in charge of this branch line. <laughs> Only for a while. Anyways, there's a lot to know. There's passengers that need to be delivered in Annie and Clarabelle, stone trucks to take to the harbour, milk to deliver... Toby made sure to tell Bill and Ben everything they needed to know and do. But Bill and Ben felt they didn't need to be told what to do. They thought Toby was being bossy. It would help if you stopped by the platform. That's where the passengers get off. Oh, all right, all right.
taking on water. Yeah? What about it? That's milk, Ben! The water tower is over there! Oh! Soon, Bill and Ben were beginning to feel fed up. Huh, that's silly Toby, thinking he can tell us what to do. But he can't, so we'll show him. Make sure you two wait for Mavis to deliver the stone trucks from the quarry. I'll be back later. The line up to the quarry runs alongside the road. Mavis is always careful here, especially at the bend where the road crosses the line. Whoa! Watch it! I've been asked to help move a few trucks further down. Toby's been a little held up. <laughs> Toby's got to go to the quarry in a bit. Let's go up there now and mess it all up. Good idea. Job's done. I'd like to see Toby sort that lot out. <laughs> what good are useless trucks to you? I could carry all that stone easily. Oh really? Is that right? Of course it isn't, Bill. This lorry couldn't carry a load of feathers. <laughs> and even that would be a struggle for him. Oi, you want to say that again? But the twins had forgotten all about Mavis. Mavis was very annoyed to find the quarry in such a mess. Good grief! This'll take ages to sort out. By the time Mavis had rearranged all the trucks, she was very late. Come on, snail on wheels, get moving, I'm already loaded. Get off my bonnet! Someone messed all my trucks up! <laughs> Not my fault you're so slow and useless! <laughs> As Mavis approached the crossing, she saw the lorry again. Stop pushing, you lot! Stop! Uh, stop! Oh, 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 look out! Look out! Ouch! Ow! That hurt! Oh, rotten rails! Breaking my concentration! Oh, all that hurts. That's why, Mavis. A quick trip to the laser works, and you'll soon be back in business again. Thanks, Norman. But I'm worried about the quarry. There'll be more work for Toby. Mavis's manager asked for an engine to cover her while she's being repaired. I suggested you two since I heard that you helped to cause her accident. You messed up the quarry yard and then antagonized that lorry. But uh, we never meant for her to crash, Toby. Honest! But she still did, didn't she? Honestly, you two, stop thinking about tricks and games and start thinking about working hard! Old engines, they won't listen to us. Yeah, it's not even our fault that even happened. Toby now had to make longer journeys down to the harbour, which made him nervous. I'm just worried about my small water tank. What if I run out or the water tower is broken? Don't worry, Toby. You'll be fine.
We still haven't shown that Toby what for. Don't worry. We will. We have to shunt for Mavis while she's away. Toby has to collect the trucks. Let's teach him a lesson. Next morning, Toby woke up bright and early, but Toby soon found that Bill and Ben were late. Uh, sorry, we're late, Toby. Uh, there was a, uh, a cow on the line. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, uh, you better hurry. Hmm, right. Well, I can't waste time. I have to go. When Toby arrived at the harbour, there were so many trucks that there wasn't any room for the ones he brought. Phew! Some train that is! That's not just a train! That's a mega train! I bet Bill and Ben did this! We could take one half and then come back for the rest, but we haven't time! Or we could just take all of them now. I'm sure I can do it. So Toby buffered up to the very long and very heavy train. Right then, that's all of them. But, but how? I guess us old engines aren't so bad after all. Uh-oh. Now what's this I hear about you causing a lorry to get Mavis sent to the diesel works? And making oh, Toby uh, put uh, at least um... 50 loaded trucks? I b uh... Oh, I had hoped you two would work well, but it seems I was wrong. Oh, please, sir, uh, give us another chance. Oh, we're sorry. Oh, we never meant to make Mavis crash. Oh, we just felt cross. Hmm. All right, then. Just one more chance. But any more errors and you will both stay in the shed. Goodbye, dear. I'll be seeing you later. Hang on a minute. Where's my car? The fat control is so cross with us. We've just been messing things up. Yeah, but I don't see how we can make things any better. Just then, Bertie arrived looking very worried. Hello, you two. Did you hear the news? What news? The fat controller was burgled last night. The thieves stole his gardening trophies. And then they had the nerve to steal his car to carry them away in. Not his car, but he loves it so much. The very same. Take care, you two. Oh, hang on. Did you see that? What? That car ahead. The blue car. Uh, uh, let's go a little faster. That's the Fat Controller's car, all right. And there's two men in it. They must be the thieves. Well, we can't let them get away, can we? After them, you two. The chase was on.
I've got an idea. Get a pencil and some paper and something to put the paper into. Oh yeah, and then we can throw the message out to the next signal box. Police? Police? They tried to go over the crossing. They won't. Oh, no, you don't. Hello, hello, hello. What's this then, eh? Later that afternoon, Bill and Ben took the Fat Controller to the top station. He stood on a trolley and told everyone what had happened. I want to give a huge thank you and congratulations to Bill, Ben and their crews for their prompt and heroic actions. Now, Bill and Ben are cheeky and mischievous and have caused trouble a number of times. But they can be heroes too and very reliable. I think we can all agree that today they have once again proved themselves to be really useful engines. And everyone else agreed. It was the week of Christmas, and all of the engines on the island of Sodor were busy carrying people and parcels up and down the railway lines. Nowhere was busier than the Skarloey Railway. The narrow gauge engines were very busy with their jobs, but they didn't mind as they enjoyed the Christmas season. All that is, except for Duncan. Hello Duncan, Merry Christmas! Pah! You certainly took your time getting here. Sorry, but we were a bit held up by the town square. What with people caroling and all that? Ah, you see, Rusty. The Christmas season does nothing but cause us trouble. It's freezing cold weather, people take their times boarding their trains, and there's snow everywhere. Oh, come on now, Duncan. Where's your Christmas spirit? Besides, Mr. Percival understands some of the delays that are going on. He's just trying to help everyone out. After all, tis the season for being kind to others. Well, it's not kind to me. I wanted to go for a wash down later, but driver won't allow it. It's too cold for one. The water will freeze, he says. Well, Duncan, it would be a bit silly to get a wash down during the winter season with all the snow. Ah, don't you start now, too. Sorry, Duncan. It was only a thought. But it wasn't just Duncan who was grumpy. Duke, the old engine, didn't like Christmas as much either. <laughs> oh, come on now, Grandpuff. Turn that frown upside down. It is Christmas after all. Pah! What reason is there to be happy now, eh? Oh, you know, all the people who come to visit their friends and family after being away for so long. Yes! Also, there's the fact that on Christmas Day, we all get the day off to be in our nice, warm sheds. Ooh. A waste of time, if you ask me. We could be out and about getting our jobs done, rather than waiting for the workload to just pile up. Well, you must admit, though, it is rather nice to help others during this time of year. Well, that's our job. We're supposed to do that every day. I know what you mean, Duke. Nothing but just commercialized silliness, if you ask me. 
people can be nice all year round, and yet now they only choose to do so when it's Christmas? Ha! Huh. Rubbish! Aha! <laughs> See, Stuart and Falcon? That's an engine there who makes sense. Couldn't have said it better myself, Duncan. Thank you so much, Duke. Now, please excuse me. I'm off to make sure everything runs on time while the rest of you silly engines just sit around and watch the pretty Christmas lights that decorate the stations and listen to the Christmas carolers singing. Best not to let them have the same job together, Falcon. Uh, I, I mean, Sahandal. I wish you'd just call us by our new names. Sheesh! Bother. Oh dear. That's done it, I'm afraid. We'll dig you out, but you'll have to go to the diesel works to be repaired. I'm so sorry, Rusty. I didn't see you. It's all right, Luke. Accidents happen. I just hope I'll be home in time for Christmas. What is this? No more trains for today, so you must clear the station as soon as possible. We're sorry. We'll be on our way. Right. What's the matter with them? Oh, we have a bit of a problem. My purse was stolen, and it had all our money in it. We were planning on buying train tickets to get to my mother and father's home so that we could all be together for Christmas. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. It's just been such a hard year for all of us. Their father had sadly passed away, so I had to take a second job just to support us. It was a miracle that I managed to get time off so that I could spend it with my kids, but it looks like it was all for nothing. <laughs> Duke felt bad. He didn't like the Christmas season, but he hated to see the family so depressed. He knew something needed to be done. Tell me, where is it you all need to go? Renea's station. Tell you what, I'm not doing anything tomorrow night seeing that it's Christmas Eve. I can take you up there myself. What? you do that? For us? Yes, 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 I would. Can't have passengers crying now, can we? Wouldn't look good for our image. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Engine. Thank you. Never mind. Call me Duke. Best get home now and get some rest. I shall see you three back here tomorrow night. Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Reneus? Yes, yes, Duncan. I know it was a bit late. No, no, not that. But where's Rusty? He's the maintenance engine. Oh, have you not heard? Rusty got into an accident and had to go to the diesel works for repairs. Will he be okay? Oh, yes. Mr. Percival said that the damages are only small and he'll be back later today. Ah, that's good then. Glad to know he's okay. Duncan caring for someone's health? That's a first! Okay then, Rusty. You're all good to go. What he means is just wait there! 
We'll have another engine come to pick you up when we find one. Oh, thank you guys. Ahem. What about my fresh coat of paint? Ugh. Um, and, uh, could you possibly fix the turntable as well when you two get the chance? I'd say I've been on here for half an hour, but I haven't seen a clock yet, or I've been stuck on here and all. <coughs> hey guys. Ah, Derek! What did we say about you going up hills, hmm? I know, I know. I'm sorry. I should have listened. We'll get you an engine later today, Rusty. We promise. Thank you. No, no, no! Percy, wait! At the end of the day, Duncan made his way back to the sheds. He was surprised to see that Rusty was still not back yet. Hasn't he come back yet? Oh, I'm sure he's on his way back now, and he'll be right back tomorrow morning, Duncan. Yes, the standard gauge engines must have been very busy with their other jobs today. Christmas is the busiest time of year for all us engines. Well, uh, I suppose so. Yes, now, let's go get some sleep. We've got a busy day tomorrow. Rusty, please come back. Oh, hasn't he come back yet? Merry Christmas Eve, everybody! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, sir! Now, even though tomorrow is Christmas Day, we still have one more day of busy work ahead of us. So, Duncan. Duncan. Duncan! What? Oh, Duncan, I know you don't particularly like this time of year, but I do need you to be really useful right now. I need you to go and do your typical passenger run for the day. Uh, yes, sir, but where's... I don't want to hear excuses, Duncan. Puff along and collect your coaches at once. As Duncan went along with his work... He became more and more worried for his friend. No one seemed to know where he was. The last known place he could be was at the diesel works. But had he been forgotten? Was he not repaired yet? The poor little engine didn't know. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Duncan! What on earth are you playing at? Uh, Scalloway, have you seen Rusty? Rusty? Why? I don't think he came back from the diesel works. It's the day before Christmas and he's still missing. I... Oh, wait. You're right. I didn't see him this morning. I have to go find him. Uh, Scalloway, will you hand him my next train? Well, uh, I don't know, Duncan. I'm a bit busy myself. Please! Rusty could be in trouble. Oh. All right, Duncan. But, Duncan, there are no narrow gauge tracks that go to the diesel works. How will you get there? As Duke rolled into the station, he heard some workmen listening to the radio for the weather. A big snowstorm is due to roll into the island this afternoon, so if you have any travelling plans for Christmas, you'd best get to your destination rather than later. Now what shall I do? 
Suddenly, an idea flew into Dude's funnel. You are my friend, my snowplow. Thank you, Victor. I know it's the only narrow gauge snowplow on the whole island, so I'll be sure to take extra care of it. What do you need with my snowplow again? Someone needs help getting to Renaeus Station tonight. Then they can be with their family for Christmas. Renaeus Station! My, that's far away in the mountains. Precisely why I need your snowplow. Duncan knew that there weren't any narrow gauge tracks to get to the diesel works and so came up with a plan. I need to find a standard gauge engine to help me. I must go to all the places that the two railways meet. So, Duncan looked all around his railway for a standard gauge engine to help him out. Bother! How can there be no standard gauge engines when you need one? Hello, Duncan, my friend. What brings you here? I'm trying to get to the diesel works, Victor, but I need a standard gauge engine to take me. Do you know what any of them could be? You could try the wharf. That place is usually very busy, especially now that Christmas is around the corner. Ooh! Good luck, my friend! Soon, Duncan made it to the wharf. The engines were busy, but he didn't see any standard gauge engines. Colin! Colin! Have you seen any standard gauge engine stuff by? Oh, hello, Duncan. How have you been? How's life on the railway? Busy? I know I've been. Colin, listen, I... Just spending all day lifting and loading, loading and lifting. It gets exhausting, I'll tell you that much. Colin, please, listen. I need to... Why, just earlier this month I was unloading almost 50 crates a day. Colin! This is an emergency. An emergency? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Whatever is the matter? Is there anything I can do to help? Yes. H have you seen any standard gate engines pass by? Uh, oh yes. Thomas just passed, dropping off some flatbeds. Think he was heading to... Gotta go. Uh, bye, Colin. Oh, well, uh, bye, Duncan, and Merry Christmas. Thomas! Thomas! I need your help! Duncan? Hello? What's the matter? There's an emergency! Rusty went to the diesel works and was meant to be back by now, but he hasn't shown up yet. I think something bad has happened to him. Bust my buffers! I was wondering if you could take me on a flatbed and we could go find him. Yes, of course. I just finished my shunting now anyways. Come along, let's go find a flatbed and Colin can help load you onto it. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Thanks for the lift, Colin! No worries, but do be careful. There's a big snowstorm coming to the island, and you don't want to be caught in the middle of it. We'll be as quick as we can. Be careful! The snowstorm had begun. Thomas was working his hardest to push through it. No one was around, which made Thomas nervous. 
What if we get stuck? I'm not so sure we should be out here ourselves. We have to find Rusty, Thomas. We can't just leave him out here. Come on, you can do it! You're right. I'll try. You suppose he could be in there? Well, we're about to find out. Hello? Who's that? Rusty! T -t -t Thomas? D Duncan? Don't worry. We're gonna get you out of here and back to your nice warm shed. Phew! Oh, thank you, Thomas. Don't thank me. Thank Duncan. He's the one who told me you were missing. Duncan? Save the day? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Neither did I. Thomas had dropped the two engines off at the nearest part of the line where the standard gauge and narrow gauge railway met and together the two friends puffed home. Don't worry Rusty, we're almost home. Good, I've had just about enough of the outdoors for today. Oh well, at least we get the... Duke! Are you alright? No! We've got an emergency! This family needs to get to Renea Station, but the snow is too heavy for me to get through. Oh dear. Well, we must help out. You've already been out in the cold for so long. Don't you want to go back to your shed? I'll be fine. I'm not as cold anymore. But this family can't be out in a storm like this all on their own. It's not safe. Hang on, Duke. Let me switch tracks and we'll help push you through the snow. Oh, thank you. Both of you. Rusty and Duncan buffered up to the back of Duke and his brake van, and together the three engines charged through the snowdrifts. It took a good hour and a half to get to the station, but in no time at all, they made it to the station. I can't thank you three enough! You saved Christmas for us! That's what this time of the year is about. To help those during their time of need. Indeed. Come along now, you two. Let's go rest in the sheds nearby. It's too dangerous for us to go back the way we came. Of course the snowstorm stopped. Just when our fires had gone out too. Oh, never mind, Duncan. We're here now, and safely too. That's all that matters. Yes, indeed. Duncan, I don't think I thanked you properly for rescuing me from the diesel works earlier today. That's alright. That's what friends are for. <laughs> Duncan calling a diesel his friend? Are you an imposter? Nope. I'm still Duncan, and let me prove it by saying out of all the times you go and get lost, you've got to do it during a snowstorm. I mean, I know you're out there in the cold, but I was absolutely shivering! When the engines woke up the next morning, they were most surprised. The sheds had been decorated. The family had moved their traditional party to the engine's shed as a way to say thank you to the three little engines. Merry Christmas to one and all, and to all, a good night.